Are you looking to apply for a job in the UK as an international student? The first thing you need is a winning CV. That's why in this video I cover the basics of writing a CV in the UK, but also I'll cover some common mistakes that international students make when creating a CV for job applications in the UK. In the end of my video, I also share a free UK CV template that you can download for your own use and successfully apply for jobs in the UK. Hello everyone, I'm Valeria and I'm a career and education consultant for international students in UK and beyond. On my YouTube channel, Mind the Grad, I share tips and advice on studying and working in the UK. During my work as a career consultant, I have created hundreds of CVs for international students that led at interviews, job offers, and visa sponsorships. Also, I was working as a job professional in investment bank in London, and during my work, I have reviewed multiple CVs, so I know what makes a CV stand out. In this video, I want to teach you how you can create a strong CV for UK job market, so let's get to it. The first thing we need to get straight is the format. The format is the thing that a recruiter manager notices before they even read any information on the document. So it's really important to get it right. The UK is quite conservative, especially if you're applying for professional services, engineering, finance, IT or similar positions. If you're going for a more creative industry, such as film, photography, fashion or beauty, then you can be more creative with your CV. But if you're not targeting these sectors, then I recommend just playing it safe and having your format quite professional. So keep your document easy to read with clear fonts, uh, no bright colors and no pictures. Some international students use American English in the CV or resume. I recommend using British English and in England or in Britain we call resume CVs. The same applies to dates. Use the dates in a British format. So first comes the day, then the month, not other way around. No pictures, no graphs, no di difficult symbols. We're keeping it very, very simple to read and if possible just have your CV line by line so it reads like a book instead of having two or three columns. When you have two columns, sometimes it's hard to follow the structure of your CV. Make sure that you keep the colors uh, quite professional, you don't make your CV look childish and you don't take attention away from the information uh, with your design. But what's the most important about the CV is the size. Some people think that the more pages you add to your CV, the more effective it is. Well, actually, I think that uh, you should keep your CV quite short, where possible to one page. If you have more than two years of experience, you can make it two pages. Obviously, if you're applying for some research positions or if you have more than eight years of experience, you can make it three pages. But the first page is the most important page in your CV that should have the most relevant information in case someone doesn't make it to the second page. For international students without experience, I really recommend one page because there is no need to expand your profile for the second page. Then we have to move to personal details. That is the first section on your CV. And the common mistake from international students is to include things like date of birth, visa status, nationality, um, maybe marital status, uh, even names of parents. None of this information is required. The only thing that should go in a personal detail section is your name, your address, then we need to include uh, your phone number and email address and perhaps a link to your LinkedIn profile or any portfolios that you have. That's all the information we need. Make sure you're not including your photo. In the UK uh, CV format, we never ask for a photo. We, and if you include your photo, you will look very, very different comparing to other candidates. And it feels like you haven't done the research. If someone wants to look at your photo, they can go to your LinkedIn profile. Another tip is that you don't have to include your full name on your CV. It's not an official document. It is just your job application. So if you're applying for a job and you're filling a form, then you can include your full name if they ask for your legal name but on your CV you can use a name that you wish to be known at at work so for example my name is quite long I have Valeria my surname and then my dad's name as an official name but I never include my dad's name in my CV because it's really unnecessary in the UK the next thing that quite often goes on a CV is your profile or summary section and actually it's not a compulsory section in many CVs especially for some finance roles or banking roles but I recommend using it if you can write an effective summary profile. What goes into an effective summary profile? 
who you are as a professional, your main education background, your qualifications, your skills, your main experience, basically what's unique about you. You have to sell yourself in four lines. If someone doesn't read the rest of your CV, how will they know that you're the right candidate? You have these uh, several lines to prove that. A big mistake that I see from international students is writing very vague statements that could be used by anyone. For example, an ambitious team player with strong work ethics that will make any company uh, happy, uh, very, very hardworking. That could be anyone, that could be me, that could be you, that could be your colleague. Another mistake that international students make when writing a CV in the UK is that they talk a lot about what they want from a company, what jobs they're looking for in the profile section. But this section is not for you to write your wishes, it's for employer to see that you're the right candidate. So don't waste time talking about what kind of job you want to have, what are your career goals long term. You can write just one sentence for area and field you're focusing on, but don't spend too much time going into uh, details of the role, the company, and what uh, amazing person you are. Give solid facts, give solid skills and experience. And finally, don't make it too long to read. It shouldn't be an essay or a big paragraph. It's just an introduction to who you are as a person and we should spend more time on education, work experience section and skills section. Moving on to education section. If you're currently a student in the UK or you just graduated, then keep your education section right after your summary section. But if you're already working full time in the UK in some kind of relevant position, then you can move your education after work experience. So so what goes into education section? First of all, of, of course, the name of your institution, university or school, the city and country of this institution, uh, the name of your qualification and dates. Then you can also provide key subjects, key modules, project dissertation, awards, scholarships or wh whatever is relevant. The mistake I see from international students when writing a UK CV is that they sometimes provide qualifications or grades in the um, home format. And if a UK person would be reading it, they wouldn't understand what kind of grade you got or what kind of um, qualification you got. So it's very important if you're providing some school qualifications to explain the equivalence to the UK format and you can research that. Also, when you're providing grades, at least provide percentage or if you know the UK UK equivalent of that grade provide the UK equivalent. In that case, the UK recruiter can really tell if you have a first class degree or if you did really, really well in your school exams. How far you have to go in your education depends on the sector you're applying for, the jobs you're applying for, because some jobs require school grades, but some jobs, especially if you're more experienced, don't require any school grades. So it's up to you to do that research. Now we are at the most important section, work experience section. Just like in education section, you have to provide the name of the company, location of the company, uh, your title and dates. That's quite uh, self-explanatory. But where international students go wrong? First of all, when providing the title of the position that they had, they use the local title, the title they use in the home country. And sometimes, the name of the of this position in the UK would be different. So I really recommend researching how this title would be in the UK. Uh, how you can do that, you can just research by your title, um, the jobs on LinkedIn, let's say, and read if it actually gives you uh, the job description that you were doing. Then after you have provided your title, the company name and so on, it's very important to provide the achievements you have achieved in this role. The mistakes I see that international students make when writing a CV in the UK is they just provide the main tasks they had in the role. So for example, uh, talk to clients on the phone, um, send a lot of emails to uh, management, uh, produce reports. And it's not clear which reports they produced, how they, rep they produced those reports, what was the um, purpose of this reports, what did they learn, and so on. So I really recommend expanding more on the bullet points, making sure you're providing achievements, results, your impact, the skills you gained, and so on. Actually, in my course, Get Hired in UK, I teach you exactly how to write an effective work experience section in the CV, but I also teach all the steps you need to know in order to get a job in UK as an international student. Just in the CV module, I have 
a CV template, CV examples, CV writing guide with 20 plus pages, but also a lecture for each part of the CV that you have to create, explaining in detail how you can create a very, very strong CV. I also have modules on cover letters, interviews, job applications, job searching strategy, LinkedIn, networking, visa negotiations, and more. So if you want to join my course, follow the link in description of this video, and I hope to see you inside my community. We have other sections that you might include depending on your profile. The other section could be a leadership uh, experience or volunteering experience. Sometimes you can combine leadership and volunteering experience together. And leadership experience would be any roles you have done during university, for example, being a student ambassador or having any kind of role within a student union or society. But you can also include volunteering roles. Volunteering could be working as a volunteer at the church or working as a volunteer at a blood donation event. You'll have to treat it just like you did the work experience section. You have to provide the name of organization, the location of the organization you uh, volunteered or were a leader at, dates you were volunteering or you were a leader for, and also your title. So that could be a volunteer or that could be a student president uh, and so on. But you still have to include bullet points just like you did for work experience section because you still have to demonstrate your impact, uh, what results you have achieved, what you have learned. So you would probably include less bullet points, maybe one to two bullet points per a role, but definitely think about what did you learn for yourself, what was your impact in that role, uh, what was your main responsibility, what results you brought, and so on. Basically, you have to think about how did this role made me suitable for the roles I'm aiming for. Another section that you can include is a skill section. Where the section would go really depends on experience. If you have several years of experience and you have relevant skills for the industry, then it can go after your personal profile. But if you are a graduate and you don't have that many relevant skills for the industry you're targeting, uh, and by relevant skills I mean hard skills, technical skills, then it can go after your ex work experience, leadership and volunteering sections. What do I mean by technical or hard skills? These are the skills that you have to learn, that you have to master for a particular industry. It's not your personal qualities or soft skills such as communication and teamwork. These skills are probably not as important to include as um, programming languages, you know, uh, any software for your area, maybe uh, language skills, uh, perhaps um, relevant technical skills such as project management, data analysis, analytical skills, and marketing that could be running ads, uh, writing content, copywriting, and so on. So in the skills section, I really recommend including everything that is relevant for your industry, for your course, something that would really help you stand out. It's not all the skills you know in life, because some skills might not be relevant. This moves me to one of the final sections of the CV, which is hobbies and interests. If you're not sure whether you should include the section, don't include it, because it's definitely the, mo the least relevant one. The only people that should include it are the ones that really have um, some interesting hobbies with some achievements and results. For example, you like music, you can, you can say music, and then saying piano, grade seven UK exams. Or uh, you love singing, you can say, you know, singing, performed at um, several music festivals at the university. Then it would be relevant and interesting because someone can see that you have taken your hobby quite seriously, um, you have perhaps uh, been a performer or you've taken some exams, which means that you are quite hardworking, disciplined. But if you're just writing hobbies, cooking, traveling, uh, socializing with friends, this could be anyone that doesn't really sell you better. It just takes attention away from other things you've listed, listed on your CV. So my advice, if you're including a hobby and interest, make sure you back it up with something interesting, uh, with some result or achievement in that space. If you just like cooking for yourself, for your family, it's okay to mention maybe in an interview or once you meet your colleagues, but there is no need to take space for that on your CV. Another good example of interest would be, for example, putting finance and, and, and give an example of some conferences you attended, or some events, or some talks and seminars. Additional sections you could include is uh, certifications and courses if you have done something uh, relevant. I wouldn't recommend adding every single Udemy course or LinkedIn course you have done because some of them might not be relevant. Uh, so it only includes things that are going to help you stand out as a candidate. Obviously, they don't have to be directly related to your role, but at least somehow connected to the role. And if you put 10 Udemy courses, uh, the most relevant might be lost in uh, that big list. So do prioritize 
prioritize the information you share. So if you have any qual additional qualifications, like um, perhaps Six Sigma belt, or maybe professional qualification, or CFA, make sure you include it, it's very, very important. And finally, if you are uh, in research, and if, if you are applying for a position where your research would be valued, or any publications you have done would be valued, then you can have a section called research and publications. And the last thing to cover when it comes to writing an effective CV in UK format is having a references section. My tip is not to have one. I don't think it's worth writing things like references available on request, you just take in space. If someone needs the references, they will ask you. And also definitely I wouldn't include the personal details of your uh, references. Why is that? Because you didn't ask for permission to share these details around the world, around the internet, most likely. But also, again, if someone needs uh, that information, they will ask and you shouldn't be wasting your CV space on um, details or personal details of some people that you worked for. The final tip before I share my CV template is to save your CV in uh, the PDF format. Why it is important? Because PDF files look the same no matter which device or which uh, operating system they are open at, uh, but if you use any Word format, um, it, will, it might make your file look distorted. So save it in PDF unless the company requested otherwise, and it will make sure that your file looks professional all the time. Now I want to share my free CV template for UK job applications. You can download it using the link in my description of the video, and I really hope that you will find it useful and make some strong applications. Please follow me on Instagram, subscribe to this uh, channel, and maybe you can share another video idea that I can give to you in terms of free content, any free advice, I can uh, provide to my audience perhaps there is something that you're struggling with when it comes to your applications in UK. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. The best of luck from Mindegrad. Bye!